Well, hey there, everyone, and welcome to Energy Gal Meditations. My name is Lisa, and I want to talk about something today that I think is coming up a lot in the collective, and it's this idea of grief. Um, I was out for a run this morning, and I got this vision, so I want to share with you what this vision is and how it may be applicable. But before we do that, I want to remind you that I have all of these lights and everything in preparation for a sound bowl meditation that I'm going to be creating after this. Now, it'll be uploaded before this message even goes out. But if you haven't had a chance to listen to the meditation, please give it a listen because it holds with it a frequency that helps the uh, energies of grief to be tapped into. Notice I didn't say um, uh, removed, uh, um, uh, gotten rid of, because I don't think that that is the purpose of grief. Um, I did a guided meditation also around grief that went up this past week that I also encourage you to listen to. Grief is an amazing, beautiful, very, very amazing frequency. It's just really uncomfortable. And I believe that we are not necessarily meant to experience it alone. We are grieving as a collective. We are grieving as a collective at the macro level and at the micro level. Okay, we are grieving loved ones past. We are grieving uh, the dreams that we've had that are never going to be able to come true. We're grieving marriages that end and we wanted them to stay together. We're grieving our parents uh, passing. We are grieving um, what we thought our life was going to be and n now we're waking up to realizing it's not. We're grieving this 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 thought that we had that everything was safe and secure and we could rely on X, Y, Z and we're realizing no, actually none of that's true anymore and we're kind of free falling. And in, and in, rather than just buckling up and squeezing tight and then oh, being hit so hard, what I encourage us to do is to loosen up and to allow, but that, that is intentional. That is something that is a practice. Cultivating stillness, cultivating a, um, um, a demeanor in which you do not react. This happens, you do this. That happens, you do that. And you're just all over the place. I almost envision it when I was in that place of like being a player in somebody else's game. And I'm the ping pong ball and they're in an arcade game. It's like bing, 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 noise, whistles, bells. And I had no control over which is going where. And when I came out of that paradigm, when I came out of that lie, I came into this place of a peace that surpasses understanding, and I invite you into that place. Now, is it all hunky-dory and easy breezy? Uh, no, but it is less reactive because our happiness does not lie in situations outside of ourselves being a certain way. We've come into, into, come into a peace that we are, that we are, a peace that we are. We've come into it, realized it as our identity, and then we settle into that truth. And then when the things happen, we're not looking at other people to make us happy or to make us feel secure. We're not looking to other organizations or situations to make us feel safe because we're looking within. We're finding that our truest power is within. So, gosh, I've been scattered and all over the place. Jupiter and Gemini, it's got me all over the place. Okay, so what I wanted to say today was to share with you this vision that I had. I was out for a run this morning, and I was thinking about how Corey Ten Boom, who was a survivor of Auschwitz, said the phrase, I specifically remember forgetting that. 
when someone came to her and said, aren't you mad at this other person? One of her guards from Auschwitz had come to see her talk. And another person said, aren't you mad at that person? Aren't you mad at that guard? And she said, I specifically remember forgetting being angry. And so I let that kind of sit with me as I was out for my morning exercise. And I likened it to this. When I have memories that have lost the emotional trigger, it lost the emotional charge behind it, it doesn't mean that I don't have the memories anymore. It's that I'm not emotionally charged or triggered by them. I can hold on to the memories, but they don't have my life force attached to them. And so while they remain, they are not a place that I dwell in or that I feed upon or that feed upon me. And I almost saw it. I said, well, God, give me a picture because I, I, I see things in pictures. And I saw the most beautiful arrangement of roses, but they were all cut and then laying there being dried, eventually to form a dried flower arrangement, beautiful in and of its own right, but not full of life anymore, but beautiful, but no longer attached to the vine, no longer attached to the earth. And over a season of time, eventually they will disintegrate. There'll be no more. And I kind of viewed, I kind of saw that some of the memories that I have of some of the very traumatic things that happened to me when I was a kid and even as an adult, that the memories remain, but they're dried flowers all spread out being made into a beautiful flower arrangement that are beautiful in their own right, but no longer have any life force in them. And I, maybe that's, it's not quite right, but that's what kind of came to me this morning and how that applies to all of us. And believe me, I know I'm scattered and all over the place today, but I refuse to uh, re, 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 record this is what's coming out today, so this is the messiness of what we're getting. Is that so many of us are given the opportunity, because we see it now, the opportunity is always there, but now we're seeing that we don't have to carry so many of our memories with us in a way that they are attached to our life force, that they're still alive as if they are happening right now. We don't have to continue to remind ourselves of the things that happened to us in the past that were traumatic. We don't have to review them to somebody else and say, hey, do you remember when yesterday my boyfriend said this to me? We don't have to do that again and again, bringing yesterday into today, which creates our tomorrow, to keep these memories alive. We can allow them to be plucked and to be in the process of drying to create a beautiful dried flower arrangement, beautiful in its own right. I still remember all of those things, but I'm just not triggered by them. And I have no need to share all of that with everybody else because I specifically remember forgetting all of that. It's just the oddest thing. I'm telling you, there's some odd things that have been happening that I, I start creating memories that I'm like, I think that's what happened. You know, I start creating beautiful memories. Why not? It's my life. Why not create beautiful memories? So, um, yeah, that's, that's what I have to say today, that we are all grieving. And listen to that guided meditation from this past week on grief. It's beautiful. I create things spontaneously and it just came up as a download. So beautiful. And then listen to the, the sound meditation that I have uploaded from this past week also. It will have the transmission of allowing the grief. If I can be of service to you on your healing journey through grief or whatever, 
click any of the links below. Um, yeah, thank you for hanging out with me in this space. It's, it's a pleasure, it's a joy, it's an honor, it's a privilege, and there is no other. So when you heal, I heal, and I really understand that. So I am very joyful when you heal. All right, everybody, take care. Peace, peace, peace that surpasses understanding. Be in you because it is you. And as you wake up, and remember, and then embody that peace. May it be a frequency that is offered out to the collective so that they can remember that they too are peace. Take care everyone. And clearly my dog Gia says, peace be with you as well. <laughs>